Sometimes it is all just smoke and mirrors. What is this? Sometimes the stars just seem to align when you get home from a hard day's work to a bunch of boxes. But then again, this is YouTube and it's all smoke and mirrors. To be honest with you, these boxes right here, these things took forever to come. So I think I'm going on, feels like a month. It might only be like two or three weeks. I don't know, still, it's too long. I ended up ordering a bunch of parts for Shyster 50, or what I kind of affectionately call Project Scooter 50. We ended up getting a bunch of parts for it because it was a crash child. So, yeah. I'll explain a couple of things that I went through with getting parts for the scooter. Because it's a Chinese scooter, one of the biggest things is, yeah, trying to source your parts. Now this thing is a 2017, so you figure it's only a couple years old and yeah, there should be parts available, and they are. It's just, I guess, finding the parts, that's what the difficult thing is, in, in some ways. Because it's a Chinese scooter, sometimes you're like, do I need this part? Is this part actually for this scooter? Because online, obviously things are just so vague sometimes. I did come across a couple of websites, and I'm gonna share those websites with you. I'll leave you know links in the description or whatever, so if you need to get parts for these vehicles, or at least for this type of vehicle, I'll definitely recommend going to these sites and the process that I went in and this one site I'm going to tell you right now, don't waste your time buying from them because, I don't know, my opinion, they're a piece of crap. A piece of crap? Isn't that a little excessive? To be honest with you? No, not really. But you know what is excessive? This cup of coffee. Because of how hot it is. But anyways, to kind of get back to what I was saying. So, this particular company, which right there so this particular company so let me explain so I ordered parts from the company I think it was like a Friday or a Saturday went online ordered the parts everything seemed cool a couple of little funky things popped up which made the website kind of seem fishy meaning every time I would go over to the minimize button or kind of like hover my mouse up in that area for some strange reason all of a sudden I'd get this little pop-up window that would say hey wait don't leave we'll offer you blah 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 percentage off if you order now there was no way to actually click on the little pop-up as soon as you moved your mouse away well the link would disappear yeah but does that mean you have to be so excessive in your wording stop interrupting me it was two hundred and five dollars worth of parts and in my mind I'm thinking to myself you know, I guess there's no other way that I can get these parts. They kind of do seem a little high. I checked eBay, I checked, you know, a bunch of other sources, and yeah, that seemed to be, I guess, the going price. Where am I in this story? I need another sip of coffee. The timeline was, I think they said something around three to four business days, which was processing, and then obviously you would then get the order maybe about a week later through shipping. You know, ordering on a Friday or Saturday, I kind of knew I missed the window anyway. I actually believe it was a Friday. So when I ordered the parts on the Friday, got my confirmation, everything seemed fine. Thought everything was going to go through. It was early enough to where, you know, if they had nothing to do, which who knows, maybe they're just some major part supplier, I have no idea. But if they are a major part supplier, the way they treat their customers, that's, I guess, where I got that piece of crap from. Another sip of coffee. Being business days, I knew that Saturday and Sunday was out, and then I knew I'd have to wait until, what, Thursday, you know, I'd get an email that said, hey, your parts have shipped, or whatever. So, come Thursday, nothing. Now, obviously, the days prior, I'm thinking to myself, boy, it'd be great. You know, I hope I get, you know, whatever through this company, and in the meantime, what I had done was went online and started searching around for more parts. Realized that kind of overspent wasn't really my fault I guess because the longer or the deeper that you search sometimes online you can find better deals another sip of coffee so I did realize that I probably overspent which was fine no big deal got the scooter cheap enough putting the parts into it obviously labor's free and no big deal I guess in a way it all panned out in the end so come that fourth business day Thursday, there was actually nothing. Here comes Friday. 
Not sure exactly how the timing worked versus where this company actually was from, because you know, because it was from a website, shady, shady website. But the website format was actually pretty good, which kind of made me click that buy now button. So here comes Friday, I shoot them an email. I think not more than, I'd say 20 minutes or so after me shooting my email saying, hey, I haven't received any confirmation on, you know, a parts order or delivery date or shipping or anything. You took my money. They literally took my money that day of the order. So on Friday, they took my money. So I get an email. 20 minutes later saying, hey, none of the parts that you ordered were in stock, so we're gonna refund your money. Whoa, are you all right over there? We'll refund my money? Great. So now I just literally wasted over a week waiting for parts <laughs> that were never gonna come. Have a beer. They waited till the last business day to say, oh yeah, hey, by the way, or maybe even some cheese with your wine. You know, all the parts that you had on order, you know, $205 worth of parts, which I guess maybe that wasn't enough money spent. I don't know. What does any of this have to do with the point blank fact that you got parts that are sitting right there on the front steps? It wasn't even the entire parts order. I had two or three more things that I still had to purchase, but they actually said that they didn't have it in stock. So that's where I ended up, you know, finding out online that I ended up paying a couple of extra dollars more for some of their parts because the other parts, you know, from other companies I had found cheaper. So I guess in a way, sometimes it all washes out in the end. You get a company like that, you learn your lesson, piece of crap company, Tao Tao Parts Direct. Hey, good job. So I did actually end up going through a couple of other companies. Apparently it's two companies they ended up ordering parts from. That's TXPowerSports.com. And then the other company is PartsKit.com. And like I said, I'll leave links in the description below along with my Amazon affiliate link. So, you know, if you want to buy any stuff through Amazon, just hit it up through my link. Even if you're not going to buy anything from my links, go through my links. I'll get a couple of pennies from the sale and keep this amazing, awesome content streaming to you live, well, not live, recorded live, whatever it is, daily, on the daily. Let's turn this into a full-time job. You know, can become a YouTuber. The TXPowerSport.com, you can actually call them. They have a number, they'll respond. And then PartsKit.com, amazingly, I was surprised. They responded to emails, for, at least for me, like that. Between those two companies, look at the part numbers, compare the products, you might be able to get, say like, I was able to get a fender mud flap, which the mud flap I paid a little bit extra, partskit.com actually had it a little bit cheaper, but then again, the parts swap out between the two companies, like the LED light was $29 at, I think, TX Power Sports, and then Parts Kit had it for like 12 bucks. So the difference in price between what I ended up paying I totally made out in the end. I'll give you a tally of what my parts actually ended up costing. And then from that $205 order, I was still missing a couple of things. The PartsKit.com, they give you schematics and diagrams and explanations of parts and, well, not exact explanations, but you kind of have to know what you're doing. Another sip of coffee. Oh, it's just so good. I have no idea why, but I've got three hawks circling my house oh what was that dude did that did that hawk just drop that little bird are you kidding me wait a minute i'm so confused is that little bird literally going after the hawks where did it go look it what is going on it sure did look like the hawk dropped a bird. Like, I was watching it, and then just out of nowhere, it just seemed like this little bird came, like, looks like, out of the hawk. I don't know. That was cool. Back on the uh, Schuster 50. So this first box right here, this is actually, this is the one I feel that's um, maybe the most important, because this is, this is the company that I ended up... Um, I definitely recommend this company and I think one other company out of the four companies that I dealt with. I'll have to, you know, go through things and check stuff out, but um, this is um, this is actually from Parts Kit, which is uh, Tau Motoring Incorporated, I guess. 
and they're out of Texas. So uh, this box right here, let's see what we got. A bunch of bubble wrap. All right, so this piece right here, this was this was actually an unknown. This is a um, this is an LED stoplight, and I wasn't sure if this was actually the piece that I needed. So after looking at this piece, um, this actually isn't a piece that I needed, but it was only four bucks. I'm sure I can find a use for it somewhere. So in the packing list, right here, you can see what we've got. Got a bunch of pots in there. What's up, Guy Garage? We got a rack. We got for two. That was an accident, but it was only 17 bucks, so that was no big deal. License plate light. I think that was like seven bucks or something like that. Tail light assembly, which is that piece right there. We got a uh, scooter tail panel, which I needed because mine's broken. Got a couple of uh, column hex socket bolts. So here's the LED light that we have. This is actually um, this is actually a, a piece of what was left over. So this piece right here, this is actually a uh, mud flap, which is also a tie-in to where the actual LED light attaches onto. And you can see by looking at this bracket, it's the exact replica of this piece right here. So this piece, we don't need anymore. So it looks like it's got its bullet connectors, which, let's see if we can expose the wires. Yeah, so exposing the wires right there, yellow with a green stripe, brown and a regular green, so green for ground, right? So that'll be nice. We got that piece. Then we got the tail panel, which looks like it just needs to be cleaned up. It was probably sitting on a shelf or who knows, maybe it's a piece that was a takeoff. I have no idea. It doesn't matter. Brand new. What else have we got? We get the uh, license plate light, which I needed because the one that's on the scooter is broken. I could probably switch this out to an LED too, by the looks of it. Just pop out this little grommet thing right here. Expose your bulb, and let's go ahead and throw a new LED bulb in there. So that'll be nice. It's an incandescent bulb right now, so we'll swap that out. So this is the rack that actually goes in the back. And uh, all the bolts that I needed just to attach the rack right in this little baggie right here. So bolts and just some washers, you know, just things like that cost like 10 cents each or something. So there's that box. Let's get into this box right here, see what's in here. Now granted, that's pretty much the box that I knew or I was fairly confident what was in there. These boxes right here, they all came at different times. So let's see what we got. packing list so this is yeah so this is the actual um, mud flap and what integrates in with the tail light so tail light I'm assuming is attaching in there somehow yeah right like that right through these full bolts right on the back side here one two three four so there's the tail light so it looks like things are coming together and then this piece, I guess, this piece goes on kind of like this or something. Like that. There we go. Like that. Right there. So that'll work out. And then in this box, pretty sure. And look at the condition of this box, too. Um, I remember when this box actually came in, I was thinking to myself, man, the way this looks, it looks like somebody did this, reached in and grabbed and pulled parts out or were trying to see what was in here, just by the way it's crushed, you know, so, um, but I peeked in there and it looked as though what I needed was in there, so, yeah, alright, here we go. So what we ended up doing was we ended up getting a front fender and it was funny because the guy was like in an email, well which one do you want? Uh, the black one that you ordered is not in stock. 
So I'm like, okay, well, what colors do you have? And he said, I think he said, like, uh, red or blue. And I asked my wife, I said, hey, what do you think is going to work out better, red or blue? She said, blue. And then it's funny is that when you get the part, all it is is the dumb stickers that are blue. So the fender itself is actually black. And then the other part that we needed, so this was actually blasted off a whole, you know, section. This whole section right here was smashed off. And then this right here. So, yeah, so this is the, um, this is that side piece that broke. And I got this in the blue as well, so I don't know. It's going to be funky looking because half of the scooter is going to be blue and half of it's going to be orange. But, uh, hey, you know, it's uh, Schuster 50. So, here we go. There's the parts. If you're interested in seeing the, um, I guess, small or mild rebuild of this Tau Tau Scooter 50, which I call Project Scooter 50, we got the parts in. Now it's just time to take it all apart and put it back together with all the new parts. So you can see what we're looking at right here is the back end of this scooter actually got blown out. So this pa this uh, passenger side panel or this right side panel, this was actually cracked in half. And what I did is I used just packaging tape and I package taped the inside and the outside to the best ability that I could. Um, just to kind of keep things together so I could cruise it around and make sure things were, you know, all right. I used a couple of zippy ties just to kind of keep things together. Um, this back panel, you can see that's all blown out. The tail light, the mud flap, all that stuff was all, you know, obviously completely destroyed and missing. Uh, we had, you know, just a few various little parts that were, you know, still hanging on. So now it's just um, time to blow this thing apart and put it back together with some new parts. You can see we already did an upgrade for the mirrors, both left and right. We got a cell phone holder on there. And I got another little thing. It's a uh, USB quick charger that actually is in big black. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So that right there, I've got one of those to actually go onto the Scooter 50. If you're interested in watching, just uh, keep an eye out for the video from What's Up Guy Garage. I'll end up doing that today. Today looks like a garbage day and... No one else is here. My wife is gone. Daughter went to work. Yeah, I guess it's time to work on the scooter. Scooter 50. So if you like the content that you've seen on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Smash it. Do whatever you want. Give me a thumbs up. If you give me a thumbs up or a like or whatever you call it, what that's going to do is that's going to tell YouTube, hey, this guy's, you know, all right to watch. And I don't know. I guess it'll help, I guess, the algorithm. I have no idea. We're getting up there in the sub count. I'm almost at 600 subs. Sometimes I think about it, why 600 people subscribe to my channel, but that is absolutely awesome. And for you subscribers that actually watch my videos, thank you. I do have actually an Amazon affiliate link now set up. You'll see it in the description below. So whatever pennies roll in from that, I'll end up using to support this channel because until I can break over a thousand subs and maybe get some ads going, the only way this channel is monetized is by my own pocket and the pennies I get from my Amazon. So thanks for watching this uh, Tau Tau Project Scooter 50 episode from What's Up Guy Garage. Thanks. So much of the stuff that you see on YouTube is so hyper edited. Just think about it. I mean, this is me saying it, and I'm not some crazy awesome, you know, YouTube editor, but I know what I go through to try to make videos actually interesting, at least, you know, I don't know, interesting to maybe me. So, anyways, yeah, it's all YouTube, smoke, mirrors, and magic. I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. This is my channel. Enjoy. Just subscribe. Stop killing me here. Where would you rate that for someone that, I'd say, with your experience in mechanics? Nice. No bueno.